In today's video, we're going to take a look at, at a function called waitpeed. And waitpeed, what it does, it's instead of just waiting for whatever child process to finish execution, it's going to wait for a specific child process to finish its execution, uh, given we have the process ID of it. So we're going to create here two child processes. That's going to be very straightforward. And here they are. And inside each process, what I want to do is in one of them, I'm going to wait uh, a certain amount of time. So I'm going to say sleep of, let's say four, right? And after that, I'm going to actually print out a message. Let's say finished execution. And in parentheses, I'm going to print the actual uh, process ID. So I'm going to have here PID one or no not speed one but get speed because speed one is definitely zero in this case so i'm gonna get the process id using get speed and i'm gonna print it on the screen and same thing here with the second process that i've created down here but i'm gonna make it so that it only sleeps for let's say one second so it's it's uh, one of them is gonna finish much faster than the other of course and of course i should wait for them so if i if i just try to call wait of null twice that's fine so now if we run this we can actually see that first is the process that only takes in one second to execute and then the process that takes four seconds to execute gets printed on the screen uh, if we print out which process we have waited for using the return uh, value of this wait so you can say here uh, int pid1 uh, result equals that and let's say print f weighted weighted for percent d backslash n bid one result and if we do the same here bid two result is that and say bid two result here um, we should notice that if we run this first is the process that finished execution first right and then it finished waiting for it, right? It printed out its uh, process ID, and then the second one that took four seconds to execute did actually print out here. Now, what if we want it to be the other way around? What if we want to first wait for the longest running process, which is this one with four seconds? How would we do that? Well, that could be done using wait speed. So instead of wait, we can call here wait speed, and it's gonna return the same thing, so don't worry about that. Uh, but it's going to take different arguments. So first things first is the uh, process ID. The process ID that we want to wait for is, well, in our case, speed one. So that makes sense. We want to wait for this process that takes four seconds to execute. Okay. The second argument is the same as uh, the, the argument for wait. So that makes sense. And then the third argument are some parameters that you can pass in uh, here telling it how to wait actually. And uh, we're not gonna go into that and just pass in zero right now. And similarly for the wait below, but for PID2 of course. So now if we try to launch this, you might notice that the finished execution process does print out, but no longer do we wait for it. So only after the second finished execution, only after this process finished its execution, we actually print messages for both of those uh, wait bit calls, right? So this is a bit more different. Now, if you really do care about the order of waiting for those processes, then uh, this is the function that you have to use. Some other nice things about uh, this wait bit function is that the bit value could be also negative could be zero, it could be negative one. So if it's a negative number, instead of waiting for that specific process ID, it's gonna wait for uh, that specific process group ID, right? And usually most processes have the same group ID, uh, unless we create it with that fork. In that case, they would have all the same uh, process group ID. So that's one way to use wait bid. If you pass in negative one, it's the same as using wait, it's gonna wait on any child process. Uh, if you pass in zero, it's gonna wait on any child process with the same group ID, process group ID. And again, if you pass in a number that's higher than zero, it's just gonna wait for that 
process ID as we saw before. The more interesting thing that you can do with weight PID is that you can pass in here as a third parameter a certain flag and that flag could be uh, W no hang and W no hang uh, means it's not gonna wait for the process to finish execution it's just gonna check if it finished execution then well it's fine we're gonna return like we did before but if it didn't at the time of calling this wait PID then it's gonna return straight ahead and it's gonna save the status inside this second parameter that we pass in here telling us that oh this process didn't actually finish execution it just uh, we just call it with w no hang so now if i try to launch this you're gonna notice that the main uh, process finishes execution before everything else and as you can see we're gonna get zeros here simply because it didn't wait for anything it just uh, uh, checked it saw that no process really finished execution yet and it was like okay well i'm gonna continue and uh, there's that so this is one thing one way you can use w no hang or like wait bid wait so if you do wait bid uh negative one null no hang then that's the same as doing wait of null but instead of waiting you're actually going to return straight ahead if there's no process that has terminated in the meantime and that's about it uh, with this wait bit function uh, it's very simple it's kind of niche you don't usually need to use it but uh, i got a few questions about it and decided to actually make a video on it so if you do have any questions leave them down in the comments below or on our discord server again uh, the source code for this lesson is going to be found on our website link in the description below take care bye